Thanks for joining us online for today's message. We believe that God wants to do so much in you and through you, wherever you are in life. As you listen to today's message, we encourage you to press into what God is saying. You can follow along with the sermon notes we provided online. Well, hey, good morning, church family. How are we doing today? Everybody excited to be here? Yeah, hey, I wanna welcome you to church. Welcome to Lakeshore. Welcome everybody joining us online, all our Lakeshore family, all of our guests today. I am not Pastor Brad, but uh, my name is uh, Mitchell. I'm uh, an associate pastor on staff here. Super excited to, to be here. And we have been in a series called Hope Jason, good to see you, man. We've been in a series called Hope, and we're gonna bring it to a close today, and uh, super excited about this. But before we move forward, I wanted to take a second, I wanted to honor a couple people. How many of y'all love Pastor Brad and Denise? Can we just honor them? Come on. We love you guys. And uh, they're out this week on just being married, just being away, getting some refreshing and letting the Lord speak to them. So honored to be here, honored to speak. And I also wanna honor uh, this beautiful woman in the front row, my wife. Her birthday's tomorrow. Happy birthday, baby. Yeah. So uh, before we, we uh, jump into the message, I wanna do kind of a quick recap of the, fa- of the past couple weeks. And I wanna encourage you in uh, this message series that we've been in called Hope. If you've missed one of the first three weeks, go back. Listen to it, and if you, if you remember it, go back and listen to it again anyways, because I believe this is a very timely series that we've been in. The Lord's doing something here, and he's gonna continue to speak this message of hope in our church and in, in our nation. But uh, week one, follow along, we talked about building hope, and Pastor Brad talked about this cycle of hope, and he talked about in this cycle of hope how we all experience problems, we all experience pain and, and pressures of life, which really kind of leads us to having to make a decision. We, we can either sit and complain in the problem, come on, nobody likes those people, right? Just saying. Or we can choose to, we can choose to do something about it. We can choose to move forward. We can, we can press through. We can keep going, not give up, not checking out, but staying the course. And we find out there's something interesting that happens when we press through, where we build this proven character that we see right here. And it's usually in this moment where God shows up and he does something in our lives on the other side. It's this cycle of giving hope when we push through. Week two, we talked about finding lost hope. And what do we do when we lose hope? Where do we go? Where do we turn? We talked about not letting our past define you, not letting our past define us or hold us back, but looking forward to the future, looking forward to what God has for us, what God says about us, pressing on towards that prize. And then week three, we talked about knowing the power of hope. Pastor Brad shared this incredible testimony of somebody in our church uh, and how God is for us. God loves us, and God has wonderful plans for us. He, he, he gave this awesome illustration of how hope is it's our action step. Hope is our action step we choose to focus on to move forward in this next season of life that God has for us. So today, I'm excited. You know, we've talked about building hope. We've talked about finding lost hope. We've talked about knowing the power of hope. So now what do we do? Now I wanna talk about giving hope, all right? Does this sound good? Y'all ready? Here we go. I wanna encourage you guys to take some notes today because I think something happens, it's really important. I think when we write it down, it helps us remember it more. We can go back, we can study it. I wanna look back at our theme verse over this series the past couple weeks, which is found in Lamentations chapter three, verses 20 through 24. It says, I will never forget this awful time. Come on, 2020. How, how many of you are like, let's, let's forget this awful time, right? As I grieve over my loss, yet I still dare to hope, I love that. I'm still gonna dare to hope when I remember this, what? I'm gonna remember that the faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. I say to myself, self, the Lord is my inheritance, therefore I will hope in him. And then we looked at this definition of hope. Let's look at it right here. It says hope is Joyful confidence, I love that right there. Hope is joyful confidence that God is for me, he loves me, and he has plans for all things to work together for my ultimate good. Everybody said amen? Amen, so today, listen, I wanna encourage you, no matter your background, no matter where you're from, no matter if you're a guest today, I want you to know that Jesus changes everything. Jesus is here today which means hope is here today. 
There's so many different emotions that we've been feeling over the past several months and weeks. And uh, I'm, I'm not an emotional guy. I don't like to talk about my emotions, okay? I'm just being honest. What, what's, the, what's the Disney Pixar movie all about emotions? I love Disney, but I don't like Inside Out. It's too emotional, just saying. We've been feeling all these emotions, but, you know, to do with COVID and, and politics and just life in general and uh, being unsure, being unsure when life takes a turn, okay? And, uh, but how many of y'all know in, on, in the middle of that, there's so many people searching for hope. They're lost. They're looking everywhere. And, and you might be here today, you might be online, and you've been feeling over these past several weeks, months, some form of anger, anxiety, um, apathy. And listen, these emotions are real, and I'm not saying we shouldn't feel them. You've been feeling these emotions. They're happening in our life. But now is not the time for us to say which emotions are right or wrong because I bring good news before you today that we have an opportunity before us. We have a huge opportunity before every single one of us. In the middle of the chaos that's been happening, in the middle of the brokenness, it's our turn to turn our attention and our heart's focus to God. What we have before us is an opportunity to bring Jesus back to the forefront of our lives, more so to the forefront of others' lives. And that's my call to you today. Suddenly, over the past several months, plan, plans have changed. How many of you love it when plans change? Yeah. We don't lie in church. I'm just saying. Don't raise your hand. No, just kidding. We don't like it when plans change. You know what I'm saying? It, it throws off our rhythm. It throws off our routine. It, it throws off our, our normalcy, what we're used to. But, but through the shaking, like I said, people have lost their hope. They're, they're trying to find some kind of steady ground. What I've learned to be true to always be true is that God's plans and his steps are always better than what I originally had planned, amen? We see this in scripture in Isaiah 55, verses eight through nine, it says, my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. The reason I want to bring this scripture out is because at the end of the day, wherever God's leading us is always better than where we've been or what we had planned. Even if we don't see it in the middle, the call is to hang on today, to trust God through the process. If Jesus truly is the good shepherd, that means that sometimes he's gonna lead us through the valleys we don't wanna go through to get through the greener pastures on the other side where we need to be. We see this in scripture. We see this in Psalms 23, verse four. It says, even when I walk through the darkest valley. Does it say if? No, it says when. That means at some point in our life, in some form, we're gonna walk through some dark times, through some hard times. Even when I walk through this darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. I wanna talk about that word close for just a second because when someone's close, you can feel their presence. When someone's close, they're near. Today, God is close. God is near. So close that if you would listen today, you could hear him whisper. It says, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. One of my favorite stories in the Bible, I wanna kind of camp out on this for just a few moments, is found in Matthew chapter eight, verses 23 through 27. It's a story of Jesus and the disciples. They're crossing the lake. They just had this incredible day of ministry, and now they're going across the lake. They're going to the other side. Follow along with me. It says, then Jesus got into the boat, started to cross the lake with his disciples, and suddenly a fierce storm struck the lake with the waves breaking into the boat. It says, but Jesus was sleeping. Jesus was good. Another version says that he had his head on a pillow. If you're in the middle of the storm, get your head on a pillow, you're good, right? It says, the disciples went and woke him up, shouting, Lord, save us. We're gonna drown. And Jesus responded, why are you afraid? Another version says, where's your faith? You have so little faith. Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and suddenly... There was a great calm. In my mind, I see this not as, as like just 
Jesus standing up and everything like, rah, but Jesus just stands up and goes, hey, calm down. Everything just, whoa, just peaceful, amazing. It says they got up and rebuked. He, then he got up, rebuked the wind and the waves, and suddenly there was a great calm. The disciples were amazed. Who is this man, they asked. Even the winds and the waves obey him. You know what I love about this story is suddenly, out of nowhere, there's this crazy storm that comes in and Jesus is sleeping in the boat. He's good, no problem. But what, were, what was going on with the disciples? The disciples are freaking out. It's like they, they completely forgot in the moment who was with them in the boat. They're freaking out. Instantly, the storm arises and the disciples begin questioning God's love for them. Questioning, maybe, maybe not like really doing it, but they're forgetting who they're with. So they're questioning God's love for them. They're questioning his power and his authority over their lives. Master, why are you sleeping? Don't you care? We're gonna die. Haven't you been there? Haven't you been there? And I think this is, this is what we do. You know, storms arise and, and what happens is we question God. God, where were you when this happened? God, I needed you. Why didn't you show up? God, do you even love me? Do, do you care? I mean, again, this past season that we've gone through, I think a lot of us have asked these questions or asking these questions right now. And trust me, I've been there. Amber and I just came out of, out of a very tough season these last couple of years and just really having to trust the Lord, put our hope in him, even when it was hard. And, and just, we've decided every day we would get up and put God first even when it was hard to put one foot in, in front of the other. That's why we made it a daily routine. We, we get up, we're in God's word together. We're starting the day with the Lord and here we are, we're on the other side and we're starting to see the fruits of putting God first. We're, we're starting to, to, to see the other side, if you would. My point is this, don't let the circumstances happening around you make you question God's love for you. The Lord is for you. Look at this, 1 Peter 5, 7. Give all your worries and cares to God for why? He cares for you. Look at this, Psalms 34, 18. It says God is close, there it is. He's close to the brokenhearted. Give your cares to God, why? Because he's close. He's close to the brokenhearted. He's close to the ones he, he cares about. God cares about us. Instantly, Jesus was like, guys, why, why are you so afraid? Guys, where, where's your faith? Like, take a, take a second. What are you doing? Guys, where's your faith? Then he speaks to the storm. He calms the storm, and instantly, everything is, is quiet and calm. And the disciples, are, they're in the boat. And I think, what I like to do when I read scripture is I like to put myself in the, in the story. You ever do that? Like, can he give a different perspective? I imagine him in this crazy storm and Jesus stands up, he calms everything. And I think he maybe sits back down and lays his head on a pillow. Like he lowers and they're all like, huh, what just happened? You know, like, like Jesus is with us, but it's like they, didn't, they kind of forgot that Jesus is with us. The disciples realized in that moment that God, the creator of the universe, the creator of the universe was with them. They had nothing to fear. Let me say it again. They had nothing to fear because whether they realized it or not, God was doing something. God had them. God was on the move. And suddenly they were able to take their eyes off the storm, put it where it mattered most, put it back on Jesus. Their focus and their attention was on him and they had a fresh revelation, a fresh perspective of who he was and what he offered and, and, and this amazing opportunity that they, they now had before them. See, and I believe that that is what's happening to us right now in our lives, in this season, what we've been going through. Our plans have been shaken. What we originally planned on, you know, uh, we've been in this storm. Some of us, we're still in this storm. But today, listen, God is inviting us. He's inviting you. He's inviting me to take our eyes off of the storm, to take our eyes off of, of what's happening in life around us he's reminding us today of who he is. He's reminding us that he's with us, that we have hope today. Hope is still very much alive. God is not some distant being, but God is close. 
He's with us in the boat, in the storm. Romans 15, 13, let's look at this. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy. I love that word joy, choose joy. And then peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope. Everybody say confident hope. You will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. So listen, week one, we talked about this, this building hope. How do we do that? We go to the source. We go to the source of hope. Week two, we talked about finding lost hope. How do we do that? We go to the source who's gonna fill you completely with joy. He's gonna fill you with joy and peace. Why? Because we're putting our trust in him, even when it's hard, continually, over and over. Week three, we talked about knowing the, the, um, the power of hope. How do we do that? We go to the source who's gonna fill you completely as we trust him and he's not just gonna fill you a little bit, he's gonna fill you to overflowing through the power of his Holy Spirit. Not, not by our power, but by his power. Now what? Now what? Since we've been experienced this, now since we have experienced this source of hope, our eyes have been turned around to, and we are filled with overflowing, now it's our opportunity to give it away. Not hold it in, but to give it away. Listen, we, we've talked about what people have been feeling. There's been so much fear around us, fear of the unknown, fear of what's gonna happen, fear of some people, am I gonna have my job tomorrow? Am I gonna be able to pay my bills? Am I gonna be able to take care of my family, my marriage? Do I have COVID? <laughs> Do I not have COVID? Am I contagious? Am I a carrier? Here's, here's the call to everyone today. The truth is that we are all carriers. The question we should be asking is, what are we carrying? What are we carrying today, right now, as we leave? We go home, we get in the car with our kids, we get on that phone call, we get on social media. Everywhere we have an area of influence, what are we carrying? What are we carrying to those around us? Are we carrying fear? Are we carrying the hope of Jesus? Hope is contagious. Hope is contagious. And God has called us to be carriers of hope, to carry the gospel, the good news of Jesus to the world who is so desperately searching for hope, searching for truth. Today, listen, hope influences. And God has called us to be influencers of hope not to be influenced by the world, but we're supposed to be setting the example. And if, if we would just go into our areas of, of influence, we have an opportunity to make an impact, I believe, in the world today, maybe even more so now in our generation than ever before. Because people are hungry, people are searching, people are looking, and if we would just carry the hope, the truth that we know, imagine the lives changed. Let's bring the source of hope into our areas of influence today. This is our moment. This is our moment to think differently, to act differently, to believe differently in Jesus' name. Jesus didn't create us and call us to act like everybody else. He called us to be different. Deuteronomy 14, two, look at this. It says, you have been set apart as holy to the Lord your God. And he has chosen you. He's chosen you. He's chosen you from all the nations of the earth to be his own special treasure because we've been set apart for the good of others and for the glory of God. You know, truth be told, I think it's easy sometimes to kind of think, man, what, what's going on? And I'm the only one experiencing this. But as you look back through scripture and church history, you see tons of people who experienced Issues in hard times. Look at Noah. Noah was stuck or quarantined, if you will, on an ark with a lot of animals and poop <laughs> for several months. Not a fun place to be. Joseph was in prison for years, even though he didn't do anything wrong. The Israelites were enslaved for 400 years. David spent 10 years running from Saul. Jesus was in the grave for three days. The first century church was persecuted for their faith. But what I love is that when you look at all these stories and the many more in scripture, you see a connection. And that connection is that something was moving in the very center of all these stories. 
Jesus was on the move. Jesus was stirring. God was very near. Even if they didn't see it in the moment, God was there. God was close. And God's people played a part. Even though they didn't see it, God was with them in the trial. God was with them in the testing. God was with them in the fire. He was on the move. Listen, how many of you know it's because of the Lord's faithfulness of yesterday that I have faith and hope today? I can believe and I can trust. God did it before. He's gonna do it again. That's our hope today. The world is fickle and constantly changing, but our God is faithful, never changes, and that's our source of hope. That's what we stand on today. So listen, real quick, I wanna give you five things. I'm gonna go through it quick. I want you to write these down. I want these to be five things that you pray this week. You pray tonight. You pray in the coming weeks. You're praying in the coming season. First thing that I want us to pray is that God would use this for good. This what? This difficult whatever you're going through. That's what I'm talking about. Pray that you wouldn't just focus on this hard thing that you're going through because if you're just gonna focus on this hard thing, guess what? It's gonna be hard. But if you pray, God, use this for your glory. Use this. Guess what? He's gonna use it for his glory. Let's pray that God would use this season, whatever you're going through, for his glory. Second thing, pray that we would rest in the finished work of Jesus. We would rest in Jesus, just like Jesus was resting in the boat. We have nothing to fear. We have nothing to fear. Why? Because he's close beside us. So hey, take a deep breath. Let's rest in the finished work of Jesus. Let's pray for this, the third thing, that we would have an awakening. Let's pray that, that our city, that our nation, that, that our children, that our students, we would have an awakening and see God move like never before. The fourth thing, let's pray for relationships, that our relationships would grow stronger. Listen, you hear us say all the time, we're, we're about small groups here. Why? Because small groups are about building relationships. Why? Because God is about relationships. And if God is about it, we're gonna be about it. We all need to build each other up, to, to spur each other on in hope, encourage each other. That's what small groups are about, building life together. And the last thing, let's pray about this, that we would be hope carriers. Let's pray that we would bring hope, that we would carry hope to those around us who need it. I mean, just, just imagine with me. What if we would pray these things daily over our families? What if we would pray these things over our jobs, over our situations? What if when we left here today, we had a fresh perspective of who I am in Christ, that he's close, that he's called me to be a carrier, to be a part of what he's doing? What if we went out on a new mission today overflowing with joy, overflowing with hope? You know people are attracted to people that are joyful? God's people should be the most attractive people ever. You do look good, by the way. But we're, we're called to be joyful. Imagine the people touched. Imagine the people changed, lives changed, hope that would be given. Imagine what could happen to our, to our church if we would leave here today with a fresh perspective of who he is, and just open our eyes around us, look to the opportunities around us to give hope. At the movies, you heard us talking about it at the beginning. At the movies is just around the corner. This is probably our, our, our biggest evangelistic series of the year. We do it so you can invite your friends, so you can invite your family, your neighbors, your coworkers. This is our chance to make a difference. The opportunity is here now. Imagine, one more, if the dreaded 2020 ended up being the greatest year that we had the move of God in our church, and in our nation. Jesus is here. So hope is here. I wanna finish this morning with the story where we started today, and that was the story of Jesus and the disciples that were crossing the lake. Jesus and the disciples, they get back in the boat. They're crossing over the lake. What happens? An unexpected storm comes in. Jesus is sleeping, not worried, he's good. The disciples panic. They awaken Jesus. They say, Jesus, don't you care? We're gonna die. Jesus says, where's your faith? Why are you scared? 
Jesus speaks to the storm, it calms. God's power is revealed and reminded in the moment and they get to the other side. In that moment, the disciples realized something, that God was with them, that God was on the move and they couldn't wait to get to the other side because they wanted to tell of what God did. The opportunity is here now. Thanks for joining us online today. If God used this message to impact your life, we'd love to hear your story. Also, if you made a decision to follow Christ today, we wanna send you a brand new Bible and a devotional guide to help you in your new journey of faith. Send us an email to connect at lakeshorechurch.net with your address and we'll get that out to you this week. We'd love to celebrate what God is doing in your life and help you with your next steps. Thanks again for joining us today. We'll see you soon.